Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out here on the launch pad once again with an RA9. Uh, this time we're just kind of doing a uh, test flight mission in our next step toward crewed interplanetary travel. We need to test to see if some of our new uh, crew cabins that claim to be LEO rated or re-entry rated, sorry, are actually up to the task. We have a crew carrier that seats three people that says it's rated for uh, LEO re-entries, but I really want to know if you put it behind a heat shield, if it'll survive a, a uh, interplanetary type speed re-entry. So that's what we're here to figure out today, because this is a vital step on our interplanetary crewed mission quest. So if we can't bring them back to Earth safely, there's no point in flinging them out there. So we're going to get this thing into a uh, very eccentric orbit and test the re-entry capabilities as built. And I guess I'll show you guys the, uh, the crew cabin and the pod here uh, a little later. First, we got to get it up and get it going. So I will see all of you in orbit. This launch is uh, a pretty standard fare. Uh, it's just our standard RA-9. Uh, the main difference here is that we are not even going to attempt to circularize our orbit. We're just going to go straight uh, out to a very high apogee. Uh, booster step was there, and now the fairings are off, so you can have a little bit better of a look at the uh, Donegal capsule. Now onto our second stage, the twin RL-10s. Thankfully they both lit and they both stay burning consistently. We're just gonna go ahead and burn the entire stage uh, all the way out. Because there's, like I said, no point in really circularizing. We're trying to do a uh, high uh, apogee uh, re-entry test to somewhat simulate re-entry effects from an interplanetary transfer. So we are coming up on engine cutout for these. Ah, crap. <laughs> uh, we have no connection currently, so we cannot stage. Uh, that being said, we can, however, hold down the thrusters until we can stage, because our Apogee is not nearly as high as I would like it to be. Uh, we're not going to get a connection for such a long time. I don't even know if we're going to get connection from this station here. So this might be a two-lapper. Just saying. And that's kind of dangerous. I did not intend for this to be up for more than one actual orbit. And uh, we are losing electric charge. We do have quite a bit of it, but uh, it is shedding off at a pretty decent rate so we're just gonna yeah we should probably just take a lap huh oh we have connection that was a lot faster than I thought man we're so off angle though it doesn't really matter this is a test run and the very least we can do is get rid of that uh, get rid of our RL10 stage and pull away a bit now this is uh, uncrewed, obviously, because it's a test run. We're not going to kill anybody, hopefully. Might land on something. Anyway, uh, this is what I have just uh, experimentally named the Donegal Capsule. Um, anybody who can cite me what that's a reference to gets a free internet high five. Anyway, uh, it has a capacity of four, although its intended uh, flight crew is two for a super extended stays in deep space. This part is not actually going to be part of the finished product. We'll have a much larger ship behind it, flown by a much larger rocket to get it there. But really, we're just testing to see if this crew cabin, which is gentle LEO rated, will withstand a not-so-gentle uh, <laughs> direct descent re-entry because it has a heat shield behind it. So, that's the point of today's exercise. Let me just, uh, yeah, okay, good. All thrusters are firing. Uh, we are, I guess, going to take a second lap, so we're just going to go ahead and time warp around to that. I should set up a node so that I don't just fly past it. That's in seven hours. I wonder how much battery life we have and how much delta V getting this up. Yeah, we, we want to be just below escape velocity.
There we go. It's uh, 893 meters per second. I'm sure we have that. Oh, in spades. 1422. Because we're also going to need to adjust to re-enter once we are at uh, Apogee. So, time warps. One, two, come on. Give me the men. Yeah, one, two, three, go. How's our electric charge? Yeah, I think we'll be okay. Will we be all right for a second trip back around, though, is the real question. <laughs> because the next lap is going to take far, far longer. Like, days longer. Oh, man, seven hours almost kills all of our battery. That is not good. <laughs> Eek. All right, well, we'll make this burn. We'll arm our parachutes. <laughs> And then, uh, maybe get mech jeb? No, that's cheating. Estimated burn will take three hours. Activate engine. Looks like we're good. Let's light it up. See a stairs recharge our batteries? No. No, it does not. Make sure our radiators are off. Okay, good. Means that one should be off. Yep. This burn's gonna take six minutes. What can we do to save some electric charge? Not a whole lot, because this core was probably not the best choice. But the this requires a crew member to have its avionics be engaged. This has no avionics whatsoever. This consumes like 750 watts and will obviously not be part of the final design, I guess. We can spin this into the sun a bit. Get both those panels working. Yeah, let's do that. What's our charge looking like now? Ah, well. We're still at most of the draw that we had before. There. 288 watts per panel. We still have a draw of 0.90. Dang it. All right, well, arm. Armed. And armed. Maybe we'll need more parachutes than this. It would be nice to know, wouldn't it? Uh, all right, that was, what, seven hours? No, I guess way less than that, because our current time to Apogee is five hours. Well. I'm going to be really mad if this whole test gets scrubbed because we don't have enough battery life to make an adjustment to our perigee once we get out to altitude. I guess we'll see when we get there, huh? Alright, so we have a total apogee of 426 million meters. Good. Past the moon, but not quite escape. But it's going to be similar speeds that we can expect for a uh, free return. And I'm going to see if there's uh, any maneuver I can make very quickly that will lower our perigee to within re-entry specifications. Without, uh, well, so that we'll be... <laughs> Even if we don't have battery, we can hopefully still test the re-entry capability of this thing. Yeah, here we go. 82, not quite low enough. 61. I think we'll go for it. That's 343 meters per second. But you know what? If we're out of battery and we do nothing, that's not going to do us any good either. So we're going to go ahead and make this burn. All right, 63 kilometers is our total perigee, and, but our apogee now has risen to 589 million meters. This is going to be very, very interesting. <laughs> so I wonder if I can get flight computer to hold retrograde. Or really, I guess, uh, my... Let's set up a node here. For 
for whoa come on man don't don't do silly things to me all right so we're gonna get ourselves pointed to this node which should be to burn retrograde which will leave us hopefully on a uh, but first telemetry when we hit the atmosphere so even if the batteries are dead we can still see if this thing is going to survive. That's really the only point of this whole test, is to see if this thing survives. But uh, we're going to have to get to that in the next episode. I'm really sorry. I know. Um, yeah. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's mighty pretty, I have to say. Man, this game, sometimes, it's just so effing pretty. Right, so sorry it was such a quick episode. The next one will likely be a quick, quick episode also. Maybe I'll, I don't know, release them on the same day. Be extra nice, perhaps? I guess? Anyway, <laughs> for real this time. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. Uh, I will see all of you next time. Until then, see you later.